Elizabeth here, and she did the detox program, and she was gracious enough to meet with me today and tell me a little bit about her experience with this 28-day uh, process. So thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you for taking this time. Um, and I just want to start by asking you um, why you decided to do the detox program in the first place and what you were looking for. Um, I think my main thing was inflammation, struggled with mm -hmm. inflammation for a long time. I guess I didn't realize how connected to the extra weight that I had on, um, mm -hmm. processing menopause and, mm -hmm. uh, and then just kind of everything that entails not sleeping great, not feeling great didn't realize how little energy I had until I got yeah. energy. I know. Um, Isn't that wild? You like, don't realize how bad things were until you feel better. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. So just overall, but my, I, I, I did initially go in going, I want to lose 10 pounds, mm -hmm. I lose 10 pounds. And I want to stop feeling puffy and looking yeah. puffy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Kind of a... So can we, talk about that more because I think generally the reason that people do programs like this, one of the number one reasons, if not the number one reason is that people want to lose weight, which is <clears> a <throat> great reason, right? And what I find is that as much as we, you know, want to lose weight, it actually doesn't end up being the biggest motivating factor. And that so often people don't anticipate how much better their lives are just across the board once they start making these changes. And so certainly weight loss is a part of that, but there's all these other things that happen that end up being more motivating even than the weight loss was. Yes. And initially though, that weight loss tip of the iceberg is, and that's why I think that standard process has been so amazing is mm -hmm. you get that, you get that result. Yeah. You get the tip of the iceberg. Mm -hmm. You just don't realize how much is underneath. You don't uh. realize that. Yes, that's great. It's great. It's great to lose some weight. It does feel good It mm -hmm. to feel better in your clothes. It's a really nice bonus. But then when you realize oh my gosh, my, my rings fit. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize how inflamed my fingers were. And people mm -hmm. are say, you look so different. Well, that's all they're seeing is my face and mm -hmm. it's yes, it's less inflamed. So the initial bonus of the weight is really nice. And then mm -hmm. you realize it's so much more than that. Yeah. So how much weight have you lost altogether? Lost so about 10 pounds. I, I don't even keep track that much anymore. Mm -hmm. I'll look at it every once in a while, but it's, it's so much. My, my clothes have been the huge indicator mm -hmm. of, you know, going down at least a size and then needing a belt. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I love, I, I, I purchased and I treated myself to a very nice belt because I'm glad. I need a belt. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, okay, so you lost, you know, give or take 10 pounds and clothes are fitting so much better. Um, you have more energy, you're sleeping better. Um, one of the biggest fears, understandably so, for most people before they even think about doing a program like this is that they're terrified they're going to be hungry. You know, because like your classic detox program is like drink, you know, celery juice and eat applesauce for 30 days and see how you feel after that, which is like not good. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, so people expect that they're going to be starving. They expect that they're going to have these awful blood sugar crashes. Um, they don't think they're going to be eating real food. And so then 
they sort of deprive themselves and white knuckle it through this whole process. And then once they're finished, they just are ravenous, understandably so. And they go back to maybe even worse eating patterns than they came into it with. Right. So would you talk a bit about what you ate during this program and kind of the logistics of it for you, but also how the structure of this program has changed how you're eating now, even after it's over. That I have a shake sitting beside me right now because <laughs> I I don't do morning without it. I yes, rely <laughs> on it. Um yeah, for me it was we've talked about this. It was before I started, I knew that I needed to stop having wine. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I did was I stopped having wine. That was the first big change. And I did that two weeks before I started the detox program. Um, and during those two weeks, as I told you, I gave myself permission to eat whatever mm -hmm. the heck I wanted. I was yeah. like, I can only deal with, this is the first step I have to take for the detox. I have to stop drinking wine. Yeah, And that was that was easier than I anticipated because mm -hmm. I immediately started feeling better. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. so when I started the standard process, I was feeling better than I had previously. So I was super motivated to, to follow everything. And I'm not great at swallowing capsules mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. somehow. I, my mind got wrapped around the idea that this is going to be good and the results are going to be fantastic. So we're going to mm -hmm. do this. Mm -hmm. It was pretty immediate with, so I started by doing a shake in the morning, mm -hmm. with the, the complete powders and fibers and, and taking the capsules. And then I just wasn't hungry. So I would have another shake for lunch and then eat dinner. Sometimes I would even skip the, the middle of the day shake. Mm -hmm. um, that was shocking to me how I was not hungry, but I had tons of energy. So I knew I was getting the nutrients that I needed. It wasn't, right. it wasn't a deprivation thing at all. Like I mm -hmm. was not it, the weight was coming off. My digestive system was just so happy. Um, mm -hmm. and then what, what made it for me, and I don't know how somebody does it without the, um, your meals that you posted on living plate. Yeah. The meal planner. Mm -hmm. Yes. Huge difference because you're thinking about, okay, what am I, what am I going to do? What's the best thing? And the standard process has drink the shake, take the capsules. And then you have these meals and it's okay. I get to shop for these ingredients. The meals are delicious and just mm -hmm. super filling. And my family was thrilled to be eating them. They were not diet meals at all. Yay. They just weren't. Yay. They were really good meals. And that's a stumbling block for so many people who have families is that they end up feeling like they have to cook one meal for themselves and an entirely different meal for everyone else. And that was not the case for you. And so to clarify mm -hmm. for people in terms of what they can eat on this program, there's two shakes, which is fruit and vegetables, and then the powder from standard process, which is a complete protein powder um, with fiber. And then you could have lunch with a meat and vegetables and usually like a hand, like a palm size bit of meat. So like three ounces and then three ounces of meat and vegetables for dinner as well. And that's your day of eating. And so that meat and vegetable dish that you were eating at night with your family, you were getting those recipes off of the meal planner that I provide and your family loved it. It's awesome. They loved it. And, and when you're talking about meals for your family, it was really nice to, um, to fix, you know, fix lunches for school and those kind of things. And I wasn't hungry. It wasn't mm -hmm. like, cause I'm notorious for packing a lunch and 
grabbing a goldfish for myself or grabbing <laughs> something, you know, a, a little bit of, of morning cereal, you know, I'll take a couple yeah. pieces. It wasn't even tempting. I was just satisfied. Um, mm -hmm. even initially in the beginning, more than satisfied. I was, full. I was very yeah. full. Yeah. Um, I've had and so many plants. for those yummy, yeah. yummy meals. Yeah. Yeah. I've had so many clients reach out to me and be like, I can't eat this much food. <laughs> I did. I was one of them. Yeah, I'm like, right. is this, the meal planner has all this. Stuff. Do I need to consume all this? Because I cannot. <laughs> shocking. <laughs> That's shocking. And it makes me so happy because making these kinds of dietary changes is really hard and for all sorts of reasons it's very very challenging for all of us and you know the last thing that people need to be struggling with is being hungry so to feel like you're full like you have more than you need is a really really great place to be yes yes yeah and it sounds like it was easy for you. I mean, you and I have talked a bit about kind of the planning that you put into grocery shopping and that kind of a thing. And you really dialed it down to a science of how many bags of this fruit and this vegetable you needed so that you weren't wasting any food. Yeah. And I think that that is, it's a learning process for sure. Mm -hmm. And trying to get the different things in the shakes a day, like, you know, today's a spinach day, tomorrow's a frozen kale day. And, you know, like today was a half a banana day. Half a banana day is really exciting. <laughs> but mixing that up with other ones that are exciting, you know, the dark cherries or the peaches, just figuring out what you're going to put in mixing it up enough. So you don't have the, really, I don't have the same shake at all in a week, right? but using up a full bag of frozen spinach or frozen kale or whatever it is, the rice, cauliflower, all of it, figuring that out. It does take a little bit of time, but once mm -hmm. you get it, it's, then you don't even think about it. Right. Right. That's right. Just your, you know, that's what your meals are. And the more, I think the more that we can all automate our meals to a certain extent, like plan ahead for what we're going to have, the less internal mental drama there is about eating in general. It's just, it's already planned. It's already done. You don't have to think about it. And it, it also, I think, helps with making these changes because Reaching for tortilla chips is certainly easier than, you know, making a shake or making a salad. And so once those foods are available, you know exactly what to expect, you know how to prepare it. It's easier to override those, those other foods that are prepackaged and easy to come by. Right. And, but even little things like, okay, I love crunch, you know, I, Mm -hmm. a thing for tortilla chips, chips and salsa, yeah. kind of my thing. Now it's, it doesn't make me feel good. So that was, but finding now I reach for the sunflower seeds and the pumpkin seeds. Cause I still need a crunch mm -hmm. I need a little something and they're right there in the containers. And those are the kind of things that you figure out. Okay. That's what I really need is something a little crunchy and a little salty or a little sweet. And you just go about it knowing that this thing is not going to make me feel good. And this thing is going to yeah. make me feel good. Yeah. And that right there is my wish for all of my clients that, you know, through the program, you learn all about the physiological research behind this methodology and why it is so helpful, especially for liver function which, you know, so many of my clients are perimenopause or in menopause, which is such a tricky time of life for just not feeling that great. And liver function is such a huge factor in that transition. And that's a lot of what the detox program and kind of the education that I provide is based on is liver function. 
So you sort of get all the education behind why this stuff works. But what really matters and what I really hope for all of my clients is that they start making these decisions about food just sort of intuitively, because you know that if you eat tortilla chips, as delicious as they are, if you eat them, you're going to feel so poorly. So the question becomes like, is it really worth it? Like, would I rather eat something else that's also delicious and crunchy and salty and feel great or eat something else that's going to make me feel poorly? And so when the brain starts perceiving food from that perspective, again, here, I think it makes the decision so much easier to make. It's like a no brainer. I totally agree. It's just, but you need to get to that point of where it's it's the no brainer, because I, I didn't realize that there were other things. Number one, I didn't realize I really can't, whatever tortilla chips, the corn in it or whatever is not something that I digest. Well, Mm -hmm. I I actually can eat a potato chip. I can Mm -hmm. have a potato chip that doesn't have that effect on me. But until Mm -hmm. I said, okay, these corn, you know, well, they're not on the the 28 day. There's no, there's no corn (laughs) chips on the detox program. That's right. Once you get rid of that and then And then after I was like, all right, well, I'm going to see how this affects me and you eat it and you're instantly, you know, given the feedback that, nope, this doesn't work. And it is absolutely this corn chip. You're like, oh, well, I just did 28 days without it. And then you, yeah, you just find things that fit, you find things that fit and it's wonderful to have that opportunity to give your body the 28 days of space and Mm -hmm. um, all these wonderful things are happening. (laughs) Mm -hmm. You know, you feel really good and then you're able to identify, I, I, I don't need this. I don't need this. I have something else that satisfies it. And this point of clarification for having enough sort of space, quote unquote, for the body to even be able to express feedback is its is its own conversation, right? And so for those people who aren't familiar with this program, you go through 28 days of changing your diet. The first 10 days is this kind of introductory time where you're just shifting towards fruits, vegetables, meats, healthier fibers, etc. Um, And then after that 10 days is finished, then you're in 21 days of the shakes with standard process, supplementation, and still the meat and vegetable at lunch and dinner. And then at the very end of the program, then we go into reintroduction of foods. And this is a place where things can get super interesting um, because like Elizabeth was just saying, I mean, she brings back corn into her diet and it's immediate, the immediate response. Her body is not happy. But what happens when we're eating all these things all the time is that that feedback from the body gets muted. Mm -hmm. And that's part of the issue with inflammation. It's part of the issue with the immune system being so overwhelmed with really so many different irritants that we're consuming on a daily basis, that it just does not have the um, responsiveness to be able to communicate how much it doesn't like something. So then once you take it out for a while and then reintroduce it, the communication (laughs) is much clearer. (laughs) And fairly instantaneous. It's the same, you know, I had the same result with pasta. I, Mm. you know, didn't have any pasta and then I, tried a little bit and (laughs) yeah, we won't be doing that again. It's because why there's too many Mm -hmm. other things to substitute. And yeah, you really, the feedback is, is right there in front of you. (laughs) Yeah, totally. Um, and I love as well that you've found treats that work for you, like a potato chip. 
you know, and that there are potato chips on the market that are made with avocado oil or like other healthier oils so that you're not eating trans fats. Yep. So you can get that great potato chip. Your body has no problem with potatoes. Fabulous. Right. And that's really what it's all about is identifying what those foods are that you can still have and getting and having them prepared in a way that you enjoy. And and like you said, it's a journey, but it is it's a journey and it is quite possible. Very possible. And finding and you do need you need those you need those treats. You need your sweet treat that Mm -hmm. your body is, you know, can can handle and accept. And it's it's a fun experiment. Mm-hmm. at the end of the standard process, when you do reintroduce some things and you're like, get to find out what, what treats your body's okay with. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I think for me as a recovering sugaraholic, um, <laughs> I, <laughs> you know, when I first got diagnosed with polycystic ovary syndrome, and I mean, that was like, a several year process for me of realizing how much I needed to stabilize my blood sugar. And that every time I ate something really sweet, that it just crashed me. Like I would literally have to go to bed and take a nap. And yet I had these insane sugar cravings. And so, you know, it was such a process for me to figure out how to still get my sugar fix and not crash my blood sugar. And Mm. I've said this to several clients over the last few days, um, that it's like almost every six months or so, just sort of organically, my diet continues to change as I learn more about what it is that I need. And I don't really need that sugar fix anymore. I mean, it's like, it's, I'm, like I'm like, I was thinking about this yesterday. I was like, it is astonishing that I eat like two pieces of fruit now. And that's like all I need. Like, I just don't eat anything else. I mean, if you had told me that 10 years ago, I would have been like, you are, you're real funny. <laughs> That's never going to happen. Where are the cookies? <laughs> right, right. So, you know, it's, it's a journey. And, and I think, you know, you just, you get paid dividends for making that, for making that transition and having the patience for it. Yes. And it, it's, it's hard to think about it when you're just starting out like, oh, I'm, Mm -hmm. I'll never feel that way. Oh, that's no, my sugar cravings are way worse than what she's talking about or Mm -hmm. (laughs) that kind of thing. And that's really why I do love this because you get, you get reward And you Mm -hmm. get, and then you keep making these realizations along the way. I'm, you know, I don't even know how long past it. I feel like I'm, it's like the third month. So, but it's like, there's still so much each day is, oh, I can, I can eat that. I can, you know, I can do that. I can, it's, it's really a, um, it's just a great, yeah, it's a great, it's a great feeling. Mm-hmm. And that you bring up a good point. So how long out of the program are you now? I started March the 4th. Okay. So you've, yeah. So you're almost two months out from it now. Almost three. Yeah. 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 Oh, out from the end. Yes. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Out from the end. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you, you finished the program two months ago. I'm so, I mean, it's Sounds like, right. yes. so glad that I'm talking to you now about it. Right. I mean, that in and of itself is telling as well, because oftentimes people love the way that they feel right afterwards. But, you know, talk to somebody two months after they've done some sort of a detox program and they are just back to where they were square one. But that's the thing about if you if you do the process and you um and it creates habits. So it's not a, it's, it it is, it's a 28 day program, but it's really a lifestyle change. Yes. Yes. And a manageable, doable lifestyle change Mm -hmm. that walks Mm -hmm. you through step-by-step in the beginning. And, Mm -hmm. and then you're, 
you know, it's not even, you don't even think about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's it's just who you are. uh Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. And that requires so much less effort when it's just what you do versus what you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Um, Okay. Let me see. Do I have any other questions for you? Um, I think that's really it. Is there anything else that you want to add to this conversation? That's it. Just thank you so much. And, you know, I've shared this with you before, and this is why I wanted to talk to you today is that, uh, there are so many of these programs on the market and a lot of them promise to the moon and back. Um, and they may achieve those promises in the short term. But the thing that I'm the most interested in is how my clients are doing months after they've stopped working with me. That's what I really care about um, is if these changes are sustainable and if the results last and um, and that you have the education to really be able to take care of yourself for the long term, you know, for uniquely you, for uniquely what it is that you need to feel better. Um, and I'm glad that we've achieved that. So thank you so much for, for talking with me today. I greatly appreciate it. And you have inspired so many people. So. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for taking me on the journey. (laughs) 